Hey everybody, it is Quicken, and I know normally we do a tattoo talk video on Tuesdays, but today I'm going to talk about something that is a little more related to the world, like maybe this affects you as a tattoo person, or maybe not, but I want to talk about my earlobe reconstructive surgery. And I'm not saying that piercings and tattoos always necessarily go together, but it's been about a year and a half since I've had my reconstructive surgery and I do see a lot of questions in the comments from people who maybe are new subscribers or curious subscribers or just passing through. So I thought I would talk about it today and take a little break from tattoo content. I have a really, really, really awesome Tattoo Talk Tuesday coming up in the future that is a collaboration. So you can definitely look forward to that. In the meantime, today we're gonna be talking about my earlobe reconstructive surgery, um, price, pain, and the afterlife of having reconstructive surgery. I don't have a problem with it at all. I don't have a problem with people with stretched ears, stretched piercings, any piercings. And I honestly still feel like I have an alliance to these people. I still feel like I have a place in body modification culture and just because it's not super apparent when you view me doesn't mean that I have any issues with people who still have stretched ears or are planning to stretch their ears and things like that. I get a ton of questions from people asking me to do piercing videos and my conch removal video and stretching my filtrum video and I just feel like although I did those things and did them somewhat successfully, I think that there is a place on YouTube for people who are actively doing it. So I feel like I don't want to take content away from other people. Although I do receive a lot of requests for this stuff, so I don't know. But today I want to talk about my earlobe reconstructive surgery. If you've been here for a little while, you may remember, oh wow, a year and a half ago, I went and I had my earlobes, people say sewn shut, redone, reconstructed, and that is exactly what I did. I went through that procedure to have them sewn up, whatever, reconstructed. If you've been here for a really long time, you remember when I had my earlobes scalpeled. And just to briefly talk about that, my earlobes were stretched, I had stretched them, and I was actively stretching them probably for about eight or nine years. And I just aesthetically didn't like the way that my plugs were sitting in my ear. One sat a little higher than the other and the other one sat lower. So I had them corrected so they would sit the same. And honestly, that seems like so minute, but it was something that I was passionate about. So it was something that I actively had corrected. And then like two years later, I had them sewn up. That's a little background on it, but now we're gonna jump into having them sewn up and a year and a half later, everything that I have experienced. And honestly, I'm at a point where I shock people and they had no idea I ever had it done. I saw in the comments recently, someone was like, oh, um, you should consider getting your ears pierced. You should just consider spacers. And I was like, well, <laughs> I have considered it and went through with it and had it and now I don't so I'm going to show some before and after pictures I guess prepare yourself for not graphic stuff but you know stitches and things like that last year well it was probably about two or three years ago um, after I had my earlobes corrected I'm going to refer to that as scalpeled after I had the scalpeling correction, I noticed that my ears were stretching a lot and I was worn this, so I totally knew. Um, but I found myself like if I was riding my bike, one of my plugs would pop out and you know, you spend a lot of money on these materials and for me to just like lose one, like it was devastating to me, they would fall out in my sleep. So it turned into a lot of me taking them out for a few days and then putting them back in taking them out for a few days, putting them back in. And with that, they kept getting larger and larger. And I was at about an inch and some change when I really was starting to stray away from wearing plugs altogether. And from that, it turned into like 
not wearing plugs for a week, not wearing plugs for two weeks, three weeks, a month, two months. And then I kind of realized that I was never ever wearing them. Though I really did like the aesthetic of the way my ears looked. Because I had the scalpeling, my ears no longer had the standard circle, but they were cut in the shape of a triangle. So obviously I enjoyed that because I always want to have like something unique and something going on. And the stretched ears are already a unique thing. So the fact that mine were triangles, I was like, I love them. However, I started a job um, some of you guys know from my Piercing Scars Explain video. I started a job at a time where it was do or die, I needed to get a job. And this job allotted me a lot of like financial allowances that I'd never experienced before. To this day, it is the best paying job I've ever had. And you know, I had to take out my piercings to work there. And I had to go from red hair to brown. You may experience something like this in your life and it is completely your decision to make if you want to pursue something that makes you question your individuality, of course, but for me, you know, paying my bills and living independently has always come first. But anyway, so I wasn't wearing my piercings ever and it was a time where I had worn my plugs like once in four months because I had just seen them and remembered. So after about a year went by and I wasn't wearing plugs anymore, I decided to kind of flirt with the idea of getting them closed. Now, doing research is super, super, super important. For me, I live in the state of Pennsylvania where it is illegal to have this procedure performed on yourself if not by a plastic surgeon. So if your ears are smaller, I have spoken to women who had their ears, you know, their earrings just ripped out and they were fixed, um, you know, inpatient at a hospital by their doctor. But because obviously this was a very large to do, I had to seek very like professional and specialized work for it. Because I couldn't have it done in Pennsylvania, I did a lot of research and there are a ton of people out there. Uh, I can't make that decision for you. You have to do the research and decide if you are viewing something that you deem appropriate for you if you ever decide to have it done. Always look at before and after pictures. That's what I say about everything. I um, decided to pursue body modification specialist Sampa, Sampa von Cyborg. Uh, you can find him on Instagram. He, I remembered him from BME Zine, which was a bottom body modification encyclopedia from way back when. <laughs> um, so I, it was a name I could trust and that I was familiar with. I contacted him. I waited for him to come to a place near me. And to be completely upfront with you, I paid uh, an initial deposit to hold my appointment and my deposit was $500. And then when I had the procedure done, it was $400 more and I gave them a $100 tip. Around $1,000 and that is without travel because we did drive about three hours to get to uh, the place in New Jersey where they performed it. Like I said, in Pennsylvania, it is illegal, but in the United States, um, a lot of things are statewide, so if you can drive to a different state, sometimes you can just like, there's a loophole and you can get things done like that. Finding them and getting the appointment and waiting for them to come here was about a 12 month process, so about a year. So it wasn't something that I was like super eager about because it was a very slow process. I've spoken to people who have had it done by plastic surgeons and not bo body modification artists, and I've spoken to people who've had it done by body modification artists um, other than Sampa. And I would say a lot of the feedback I hear is the body modification artist understands you, whereas the plastic surgeon, um, you know, wants to beautify you. And why? However or why ever you're getting your earlobes reconstructed, if you feel like you want to receive a beautification process 
or if you're like me and it's just not something you actively are doing anymore, it depends, you know, who you want to go with. I'm kind of used to this banter and I'm used to older women telling me that the things I do are disgusting and older men and things like that. So if I would have had to reach out to a plastic surgeon, I think, you know, that dialogue was so familiar that I think I would have been okay with it. Whoever you decide is going to provide the results that you want, gravitate towards that. I've seen great results for both. But for me, I wanted it to be done by a body modification artist because that's what I'm most comfortable with. If you know, I haven't been to a doctor in like seven or eight years, but I have been under the knife by body modification specialists four or five times in the last 10 years. So that is something I'm really familiar with. And those are people I'm familiar with. And like I said, that's how, that's the world I still envision myself in, even though I took out my piercings. That is the, the route I pursued. So I saved up that money, saved up a thousand dollars. Um, we drove out there and had it done. I received local anesthesia. So I didn't feel anything in the area, just heat and pressure and things like that. I did bring John and he did watch the whole thing and he said, you know, there was a lot of blood and there was a lot of things that like made him anxious and nervous to view. But for me, I was chilling. I was sitting there. Obviously the next day I did experience pain and discomfort, even on the ride home, which I said was three hours. About, you know, one or two hours, I started to feel discomfort. You drive that far away, so you're like, hey, let's get some food in the town that we're in. We drove all the way here, and we were at, like, a like a um, vegetarian Asian spot, and I was like, whew, we should get those dumplings to go. I didn't have any medicine or any antibiotics or stuff like that because, obviously, I did receive the procedure from... A body modification specialist and not a doctor so obviously they could not prescribe me anything but in New Jersey it was legal for them to perform that procedure so nothing illegal happened but obviously I didn't receive any antibiotics or medicine I don't know I guess I should have thought about that stuff but you think about it forever and then you talk yourself out of it and I said hey whatever I didn't die when I got my scarification let's do round two I was okay, obviously there was discomfort. I only took one day off of work, which was the day I received it. I went back to work the next day and there was a couple times during the day where I needed to sit down, have some water, felt dizzy, felt weird. And obviously looking back on it, I shouldn't have gone to a place like my job that was like so high impact with people. But I did it anyway, I don't know. I was also in beauty school at the time, so I did go to beauty school that night and work on people's head. I was really okay though. I can confidently say I'm a person who is in good health. So if you are someone who has like a weaker immune system or you find yourself getting sick a lot, I would probably consider that and consider seeking someone who can give you antibiotics because, you know, body modification artists can't. But if you have insurance, you can also go to your doctor and be like, hey, too late, already got this done, now what are we gonna do? So that's always an option for you too. And obviously that was an option for me as well if I had to go to the hospital, but I didn't. TMI, around um, two weeks, we took the stitches out at home. I have taken my own stitches out before for other things, so I really didn't feel scared or uncomfortable doing it. Um, I was happy to take them out. They did start to feel tight in my ears. They were not dissolving stitches. They were black, whatever stitches are made of, stitches. And they were wiry and thick in my ears. Honestly though, I loved having the stitches in my ears. I thought they looked so cool, so badass. Like, don't talk to me. I've got something going on that's crazy. So we took those out on, my, on our own. I had no issue with it. Um, I mean, I've seen things on Craigslist where it was like, can you come and take my stitches out? Obviously that's crazy, but taking the stitches out at home was not an issue for me. Like I said, I've healed all of the above in my like fucking bedroom. So it wasn't something I was worried about. I'm not trying to give you bad advice though. Follow your heart. And obviously like if you have a fever or something, like go get help. 
after that, I I think it took about six months for my ears to start looking normal, stop looking red. Um, the scars were pretty apparent for a long time. I worried about how normal my ears would look. Um, I would say the scar looked like a capital T on each ear. And I was also upset that my ears no longer had the same elasticity as before. During my procedure, I had scar tissue removed from my ear. So you have to think like that's tissue that no longer exists and is no longer in your ear. You will lose some of your ear and it all depends on your situation, how large your ears were stretched. If you had them scalpeled like me, all of that goes into consideration. And I also believe the price. So my price might not be the same as your price. Yours might be cheaper. After about a year, I think I saw the final results of how my ear would look. They were soft again, they were supple. The scarring was very minimal, invisible. I scar white and it kind of sucks because my scarification that I had done is basically invisible at this point. But it's a good thing, I guess, for my ears because the scarring on that is basically gone too. I have not considered having my earlobes re-pierced. If I do, I will definitely go to a piercing, someone who specializes in piercings, to have it done so I can have a discussion with them about what my ears were and how they are now. I recommend that to everybody. Don't go and just get your ears pierced by anybody. I would get my ears done by, I would go to Infinite Body Piercings in Philadelphia, no doubt, to get my ears re-pierced if I decided that. As of right now, as of today, I have not thought about having my ears re-pierced. I have a pair of clip-on earrings that I never, ever, ever, ever reach for, and I got those around six months ago. And I told myself, like, if I'm reaching for them, maybe that will tell me something. And I really, I really just don't ever think about it. I'm not like a huge jewelry girl. And I worry about like over accessorizing. So, sorry, I'm like looking at them. They're just never anything I really reach for. And not that they are uncomfortable in my ears because my ears are not sensitive after the procedure. I just like not, I don't like how it looks on me. I think that my look right now is something that I'm interested in. So I can't say that in, you know, six months to a year, I wouldn't want it. But as of right now today, I don't. Samba told me that I could have my ears re-pierced after a year, so that would have been this last April, and I still haven't had it done. That's my story. Now I'm going to show you some before and after photos. Here is my ear today that I still have my conch hole, and it's not something that I am actively having fixed or corrected as of today, <laughs> so who knows what's going to happen. But this is my earlobe now. You can see that my like test of an ear is if you could like and you can't really do that with mine. It's just kind of there. Um, it's a little red because I tried on the clip on earrings before I started filming. But you know, any given day, this is what it looks like. That T-shaped scar is apparent to me, but not really. You can see a little bit of um, roughness right here, but it's not rough to the touch. It's more just like rough in general. I think if I massage my ears even more to this day, they would drop a little more and maybe be more supple. And this is this ear. And this scar is a little more apparent. You can see that little dip right there. Yep. But it's not something that really bothers me day to day. I don't think it's anything that someone passing me on the street would notice. And there is no sensitivity or discomfort, but there also isn't like, there's n it doesn't really droop. It is not so connected to my head. There, I didn't receive any sort of surgery connecting it to my face. Um, I get a lot of questions like, did your ears used to, did they connect your ears? And my ears still like 
have that drop to it. They are not connected to my head any more than they ever were. You can see that all the procedures started about here, like a half inch in, and then up. So this is the area that received, um, you know, any surgery. None of this over here was touched. Same on this side. You can see that it started about here, a little closer, but all of this was always here from birth. And you can see these two little dots were just old piercings. They, you know, were not corrected in the surgery and they're still like sort of uh, visible, but not active. So I thought I would share that experience with you guys today. You know, I talk a lot on this channel about tattoo removal and things like that, which might be a little controversial to those who believe I might be selling out getting tattoo removal, or I might be selling out getting my piercings, getting my earlobes reconstructed or taking out my piercings, but honestly, I think everything is a work in progress and you can wear your favorite shirt 10 times and then be like, I hate that thing. I do think that all the modifications we can to our, do to our body have permanence and they are something to consider as permanent. I'm not saying get tattoos that you feel halfway about just because, you know, Quicken got hers removed, but I do think that there is an allowance for us to change and I don't think that having my earlobes reconstructed means that I necessarily sold out. I think I bought in. But um, I just wanted to share this experience with you guys today, especially if you have considered it, you've had it done, and maybe you don't want to have it done at all, but you want to, you feel comfortable knowing that you have options. The first time I made this video, um, there wasn't a ton of information out there and there wasn't a ton of people who had had it done. So it was hard for me to relate to somebody and feel like I was making the right decision. I hope in the least I helped you out with maybe a decision you're making or your friend is making or you don't think about ever, but just know that there are people on the scene who get stuff like this done and uh, they're, they're still a part of it. I don't know. I love you guys so much. Thank you for maybe being into or encouraging a video that is a little off the topic, but I'm glad to share what I know with you. Until next week, stay tuned for Tattoo Talk Tuesday. The really cool collaboration episode is coming your way soon. Lots of bits and pieces to put together. But if you are into this video today, please give it a thumbs up. I love to see the channel get stimulated by you. And if this is your first time viewing, don't mind hitting that subscribe button. I post videos like this every Tuesday. I love you guys so much, and until next time, bye. So, we're in New Jersey.